سيمبوزيوم جانسون دكتور بروفيسور وليد عبد العاطي عين شمس يونيفرستي هي ويل ادريس ستيلارا انوفيشن ان السيت كولايس تريتمنت اتفضل يا دكتور وليد شكرا يا دكتور طاهر انا يعني سعيد ان انا اكون وسط اساتذتي كالمعتاد I'm really would like to thank the organizing committee أو على رأسهم الدكتور يسري طاهر الأب قبل ما أقول الأخ العزيز الأب الحنون وبشكر معاليه دايما ويمكن هو دايما كان معانا في الـ IBD بتاعت عين شمس جروب ودايما كان سبورتنج لينا ويعني ربنا يديله الصحة ويخليك لينا يا دكتور يسري شكرا يا وليد شكرا جزيلا يا فندم حضرتك ماي توك توداي ويل بي أباوت سكيني ويب As innovation in ulcerative colitis treatment, I will be uh, very grateful for Dr. Shema. She is a lecturer in our department for uh, helping me in this presentation, and she will talk about the uh, case uh, scenario when I will come to it to, go to uh, the case. I will tell you. This is uh, our group in Shams University. Uh, uh, My big brother, uh, Dr. Sir, Professor Muhammad Amin, who is uh, the creator for this group, and really I would like to thank him and tell him always our support is with you, and this is the rest of our team, and uh, really I'm grateful for all of them. The agenda will be IBD overview, case presentation of Stellara, indication of Stellara, guidelines and recommendation of Stellara in arthritis. Dosing and safety and efficacy, efficacy data and the graphs from trial for drug approval in the unified trial. What about IBD global disease? Unfortunately, when I see the uh, uh, IBD consensus in Egypt, it's very few publication about IBD in Egypt. So it's always we refer to uh, states or Europe uh, telling the consensus or demographic data for IBD. So IBD, a global disease whose prevalence is predicted, predicted to increase exceptionally within the next decade. Over 1 million people in the United States have IBD, uh, Crohn's up to 135 cases per 100,000. Uh, what about our supplies? Confide to colon, begin in nectum and extend proximally in continuous fashion. Confide to mucosa, and submucosa. As Dr. Naid was telling us about the, uh, the pathology uh, for ulcerative colitis, not Crohn's, cryptitis and cryptabsis, crypt architecture distortion, lamina propria expansion with acute and chronic inflammatory cells. IBD therapy, but uh, as Dr. Afifi was telling us about the IBD uh, therapy, I mean, a salicylate, corticosteroid, immunomediator, and biologic, as was mentioned before, infleximab, adrenomab, uh, golilimab, centralizumab, and integrin, and anti L12 uh, and 23 antibody uh, stellara. What about the therapy? We always have the therapy like it's a, a beginning of mild and moderate and severe. In mild, amino salicylate is more than enough. In moderate, we just add a cyperine and a corticosteroid. And unfortunately, in severe type, we, go, we think about biologics. And sometimes in some patients, we go for surgery. We have a big problem in our group for patients with severe type of ulcerative colitis and relapser. They have a very poor quality of life and uh, work obviously is zero. And they often uh, dismiss from the work and finally uh, cut the only uh, source of money for them. So it's 41% of patients with moderate disease and with 48 with severe disease currently unemployed. This is a very important issue for such patients because they are really a catastrophe for, it's a big burden for the community and big burden for the financial uh, situation in a uh, third party like, or third continent like Egypt, compared with 34% of patients with mild disease. Overall, 48% of patients with 
dissatisfied with their current treatment. Distraction rates significantly correlate with disease control and severity. And again, unfortunately, sometimes because of the poor and uh, uh, poverty and um, uh, and some ignorance uh, with some patients, they go directly to to have which is relief. So if they have a corticosteroid relief, so they st stay with corticosteroid and some and sometimes. Unfortunately, uh, some physician, especially GP, tell them if you are relieved, so go for it. So some, some, some of our patients going for corticosteroid for three to four years continuous without any sort of stoppage. So what about the benefits and the risk for anti-TNF? The benefit is clinical remission, corticosteroid waning, maintenance of remission, decreasing hospitalization and surgical intervention, prevention of complication, change of natural course of the disease. What about the risk of anti-TNF, infusion reaction, infection, as Dr. Naid was telling us about TB, it's always put in the consideration because we lost our, one of our patient because latent TB and unfortunately uh, we, we were having this problem is it latent TB or not? We will have uh, giving uh, anti tubercus or not. So it's a very important point of discussion. If you have a latent TB, you have to treat really as if you don't have a TB in front of you. It's a very important point. Sepsis, lymphoma, demyelinating disease, hepatotoxicity, and drug induced lupus. This is a, a, a sketch or diagram showing the different parts. We have this uh, from the ulcer uh, can go for the antigen, antigen go to the macrophage, macrophage go to antigen presenting cells, and then begin the cascade of TNF alpha going, which is I can block with infliximab, adenimab, uh, simsia, or gonimab, or a Jack mutation with uh, the new Pfizer drug uh, to or uh, anti integrin like uh, Vido. And we have uh, anti L2012 uh, or 23 in the And sometimes, really, it's very important to understand the mechanism of this biological uh, therapy to have the best for the treatment for the patient. What about uh, this presentation about inhibitor of pro inflammatory cytokines, anti tumor necrotic factor? What what we already told, so I will skip this to be honest because I already said it. What about the pathophysiology of it? Uh, the pathophysiology of it, bacterial engine are taken up by specialized macrophage cells. Uh, this macrophage cells going to, to do what you call presenting, uh, the after processing, they are presented on type one T helper cell by engine presenting cell. And laminar propia, this antigen presenting cell go to T helper one and then mediate cytokines and with the secretion of cytokines, including gamma interferon. First, amplification of T cell prematures as the inflammatory process with activation of non immune cells and release of important cytokines like IL IL1, IL6, and IL 12, 23. And of course, the big shark is the tumor necrosis sector. These pathways occur in all normal individuals exposed to inflammatory insult, and this is itself limiting in healthy subjects. In genetically predisposed person, dysregulation of innate immunity may trigger IBD. What about the IBD key actions? Okay, so it's always tumor necrosis factor coming from macrophage and psyllium, fibroblast and epithelium. Macrophage goes increase the inflammatory cells. Endothelium increase cell infiltration by increasing lesion molecules. Fibroblasts acute increase acute phase response and uh, decrease collagen production and leading to tissue remodeling. Epithelium increase ion transport, increase primarity and um, compromise the barrier function. This sketch. We're showing the synthesis and action of TNF alpha. We already show it as 
this is macrophage and going to, and this is DN alpha and going to the receptor, uh, putting the trigger of cascade of anti-inflammatory cells. Why we have this dilemma about reason of loss of clinical response amongst patients receiving biological inflammatory bowel disease? Immunogenicity, anti-drug antibodies that is very common, enhanced drug clearance, alternate inflammatory pathway, non-inflammatory complication like strictures, overlap function symptoms, and concurrent infection like Clostridium difficile, as was mentioned before. Immunogenicity, uh, it's a very big uh, name of uh, a biological. This is anti-drug antibodies against the monoclonal agent, uh, agents. It developed in proportion of patients who both steroid dependent, like high infinity immunological memory and steroid independent low infinity occasional memory mechanism. These anti-drug antibodies are typically IgG antibodies that can impair binding of the biological agent to the target cytokines or accelerate the drug clearance by particular insulin cell. The administration of concurrent immunomediator, such as azacyprine or mistrexate, has been associated with higher remission rates and lower rate of anti-drug antibodies. This is our, what we said, our lab function. Some symptoms more frequent, but certainly less well characterized is, um, just a second, uh, experience non-inflammatory symptoms. These are usually described as intestinal symptoms, pain, diarrhea, or rectal bleeding in the absence of objective of evidence of active inflammation on endoscopy. We have a big problem in having this, as we, as Dr. Yosti was telling us that, uh, and Dr. Afifu also, to have, how can we have therapeutic drug monitoring? This issue is very important. And uh, sometimes we ask uh, one of our professors to help to uh, give us some labs to have this, but unfortunately it's always as uh, a sky high in pricing. So really we have to push uh, as, um, as many doctors of us, just push the, the labs to decrease this type of uh, the price for uh, monitoring the drug and anti-drug antibody. Many observation study have linked low serum drug levels to a higher risk of anti-drug antibody development and or less loss of response to biological in IBD. In response, the active measurement of anti-drug antibodies and serum drug levels using ELISA assay and the appropriate adjustment of drug regime. Now we have uh, a case presentation by my uh, yeah, my sister. I, I really uh, have, uh, to, uh, or I honored to have here with me, uh, Dr. Shamay Yusuf. He is the lecturer of tropical medicine department and one of the one of the first uh, star in uh, our group and uh, we share all the luck and she will tell us this case presentation for uh, the next few minutes dr shama <clears throat> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. first of all i'd like to thank my professor and my role model uh, dr walid for this introduction and i'd like to thank all the persons and my professors uh, we will start our presentation about a male patient, 27 years old. He was buried with no offspring, with no special habits of medical importance, and no family history. This patient complaining of bloody diarrhea and abdominal pain of about 15 years ago. In 2006, he started complaining of generalized colicky abdominal pain with bloody diarrhea about 10 motions per day. This patient underwent investigation showing and at the last start in colonoscopy was done for two severe hyperemia and the congestion and multiple ulceration affecting the whole colon and the biopsy compatible with ulcerative colitis. Then the patient started the conventional therapy of ulcerative colitis as Dr. Walid mentioned the step up approach 
starting with the courses of IV steroid followed by oral steroid in cases of exacerbation in addition to the azacyprine in the, do in the dose according to the weight with Penteza about four grams per day, but with partial improvement. Despite receiving all this treatment, he experienced multiple relapses with the same symptom and he received a multiple course with unsatisfactory response. At that time, we, we decided to do another colonoscopy for the patient. After about five years, the colonoscopy show also diffused inflammation, showing pancolitis with multiple ulceration and the easily bleeding on touch about my score three, where biopsy revealed severe pancolitis. After that, we take the decision to reach to the biological therapy. He started the first anti-TNF biological therapy in Fleximab after the pre-biological preparation, Pramicade induction dose, then the maintenance dose, and the patient was maintained for about one year on the Pramicade. Although the patient was in this biological therapy, he experienced also multiple relapse. At each relapse, we exclude the other causes as cytomegal by doing PCR or even biopsies in the colonoscopy, uh, and sh that show no inclusion bodies, stool analysis and stool culture that showing no infection. Now we are facing the problem, the unmet needs in ulcerative colitis, as all of us know, that this is the first entity in the F failure. The, this diagram showing that the remission rate after switching to alternative entity in the F therapy remain rather low. So the success depends also on the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. We are facing the problem whether to switch to another biologics, to another entity in F therapy, or to swap to another class. For financial and insurance issues, we take the decision to switching to another entity in F. So we underwent a colonoscopy, another col colonoscopy for the patient that also revealed uncontrolled active colitis, although we are switching to the another entity in F and the Humira was taken for about another six months, the patient showing it, as we see in the picture of colonoscopy, severe active colitis. And the laboratory investigation of the patient at that time, ESR was 80, CRB 21, albumin 3.3, and the stool analysis showing bus cells about 25 to 30. So we are facing entity in F failure of post drug, adalimumab and infleximab. At that time, we must take the decision of measuring for entity in F level and the anti-drug antibodies. Our patient showing that, as we see in this algorithm, if we have undetectable, as Dr. Afifi mentioned, we have undetectable level and entity in F level with negative drug antibodies, we have to increase entity in F dose. If we have the level is com compatible and the level is high, we can swap to another class. Our patient showing high entity in F level with anti-drug antibody. So at that time, we must swap to another class and leave the entity in F. This is showing that we take the decision of swapping to another class other than entity in F, and we are thinking about vedolizumab versus osteopenumab for this patient. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Now, now we have the decision was for this patient to have Stellara as a presentation. It's a human monoclonal antibody interfere with uh, triggering the body, interrupted process through the separation of certain cytokines, uh, which is IL2 and IL23. What about the indication of Stellara? Moderate to severe Crohn's disease, inadequate response to conventional treatment, loss response to conventional treatment, tolerance to other biological DNF and anti antagonist, biofilia, or moderate to severe osteoporosis, same indication, psoriasis, moderate to severe psoriatic plague, and psoriasis, arthritis. Of course, we have the ECO guidelines and American Gastroenterology uh, uh, Association. What about this recommendation, we propose recommendation for April 19, 20, uh, 2019. We recommend the for indication or a for remission in a patient with moderate to severe active 
human and Crohn's disease with inadequate response to conventional therapy and or to anti-TNF therapy stop recommendation. And also the same uh, recommendation we recommend for clinical remission in patient with Crohn's disease. Uh, for inflammatory bowel disease for American Association of Gastroenterology, the efficacy of uh, Stlara through 92 weeks in patients with moderate to severe arthritis who had been randomized in the Unify Maintenance Study was presented. This study evaluated the subcutaneous Stlara through one year in response to intravenous. Uh, induction, patients who completed this the maintenance study could enter along their extension through 220 weeks. That's also the critical guidelines for uh, American Association of Gastroenterology. What about the dosing of STARA? We have if it's less, the patient less than 55 kilograms, they take two vials, which each vial is 130 milligrams to uh, below 85. We'll have three vial. It's above 85, we'll have four vial. Uh, and maintenance dose is 90 milligram subcutaneous every eight or 12 weeks. So that's, that's a big issue about the finance in Stlara. And if you have a comparison between Stlara and the Nvidia map or in PVU, we, we found that Stlara is a much cost effectiveness and we took uh, this uh, chance to begin Stlara for our patients. Number of doses among us and front disease, uh, Stlara is five, and PVU is eight, Humira is 27. In a five file, I'm just be showing a uh, very uh, few slides about this file. Uh, and Slara induced rapid and high efficacy through weeks 16, weeks 8, and week 16, weeks 8 of non biological uh, failure patients, up to 67% uh, response, and it's, it's coming up in uh, uh, week 16, up to 87%, and for randomized patient to come to 62, for all patient to come 80%, which is a very good response. What about change from baseline in fetal therapeutic concentration? You can see the placebo in red uh, line, and in, in yellow line, it's week six, and you find the difference in fetal therapeutic what about the primary and secondary endpoints? What was the goal for primary endpoint? Primary endpoint, global definition, might score uh, less than two or equal to, with no individual subscore. US definition, absolute tool number uh, uh, equal or uh, below three. Rectal leading subscore uh, equal zero, and a major endoscope uh, scoring is equal zero or one. Second endpoint, which is clinical response, it is from baseline in the MIA score, uh, more than or equal 30%, or if more than or equal 3%, three points within the either or the case of uh, a rapid response. And the scoping healing, so it's second endpoint is clinical response and scoping healing histological healing, mucosal healing, and maybe this was very important for our pathologists to understand about the histological and mucosal healing and quality of life this is the most important for our patients building for financial uh, nowadays, this graph. So SLARA, the take response is 56% for our patient, rapid response in 51%, clinical remission in 53%, three years, open label life up to 74%. Safety profile is very safe, especially in humanized biologics. What about Stara is the first and only approved as first treatment to achieve his two endoscopic mucosal improvement. And that's the combination between the uh, clinical response and remission at the same time. What about the safety? More, less than 1% hypersensitivity. 
less than 1% pregnancy rate, less than 2% serious infection, and less than 5% of patients develop antibodies. Accordingly, uh, our patients, the patients started uh, disease in the lab, and uh, please, the Dr. Shema, comment about our patient nowadays taking the medication. Okay, Dr. Walid. Uh, accordingly, our patient started the osteoclimab. Uh, we assess, this is one month post uh, for the patient. We assess clinically the patient. The patient, according to the diarrhea, there is a decrease in the number of motion, seven motion instead of 15 motion, and now there is no blood at all. Uh, abdominal pain market improved in the abdominal pain. Quality of life of the patient improved. According to the laboratory uh, data of the patient, hemoglobin reaching 10.8, E is to R70, CRB 11, albumin 3.7, fecal calprotectin bending. Uh, also, we are planning for assessing the mucosal and the endoscopic remission and the histopathological remission after eight weeks from the start of the medication. And uh, thanks to our, our, our uh, Dr. Shema, really, uh, for uh, fighting for this patient. We have the financial burden from the university itself. And it was the first time to happen to have this support from university because we, we raised the, the issue and the Shema was uh, giving a hard time to the administration till uh, they support this patient with the strara. And uh, uh, they found how much patient is moving. So, there's no more for no more, no more fight for the Kurashama, and thank you for that. So our conclusion was arthritis is a progressive disease and colectomy rates remain high. Several unmet needs remain to achieve. Complete disease control in patients with moderate to severe arthritis. Estrada showed 80, 87 clinical response through so weeks 16 in bio naive patients and 80% in all patient population. 97% uh, of patients in remission were in consecutive remission during first year. STRARA shows consistent safety profile comparable to placebo at one year. STRARA is administered as a monotherapy, no added benefit of using immunomodulator or corticosteroid. STRARA is administered as a single IV dose and 46 million dose per year. And that's the benefit of, of Slara. And thank you very much for your listening. And thank you, Dr. Shaman.